Alright folks, so what we're going to do in this video is attempt to install Chirp and program a ham radio with my Raspberry Pi. For those that don't know, Chirp is an application that you can install on various operating systems. I'll include a link to this website below and you can program a number of radios with Chirp. To do things like talk to repeaters, use simplex frequencies, and, e and even set some configuration changes. I almost forgot, you're going to need a radio and an appropriate programming cable that has a USB connection. Whenever you're doing work on your Raspberry Pi, you should make sure that it's up to date. So the first thing we'll do is run sudo apt-get update. This makes sure that the repository information that's stored on the internet is updated on my Raspberry Pi, and I know of any new or deleted or modified applications that I may need to install and configure. Once this is done, I run another command, sudo apt-get install, and this checks to see if anything needs to be installed on my Raspberry Pi. Finally, I run sudo apt-get upgrade, and this will upgrade any applications. This is a new build of Raspberry Pi, so I should be pretty good. Okay, now on with the show. I go to the downloads and install page on Chirp, and I can see that there's a couple of different sets of installation instructions depending upon your operating system. I am going to attempt to do the install instructions for Linux Ubuntu. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut and paste this first command into a terminal window on my Raspberry Pi. Well, that's bad news. That means the command used to add repositories to my Raspberry Pi is not installed. So what I'll have to do is actually install this command so I can then install the repository. I do this by installing software properties common. When I run the command, it asks me if I want to use the storage space, and I say yes. Once this is done, I'll go back to running the command that adds the Chirp Daily repository. Okay, I'm getting an error message saying that this distribution template for Raspbian Stretch, which is the operating system I'm running, doesn't exist. I'm not smart enough to figure this one out. I have to do a little bit of research. But we have a plan B. For plan B, what we're going to do is we're going to search the repositories that we're already connected to and see if they have a version of Chirp that'll work. So I do this with the app cache search command, and I search for the Chirp string. And it comes back that there is a version of Chirp. What I'm concerned about is this version is going to be older and outdated. It's always best to install the Chirp daily repository, so that way you get all the updates for when new configurations for radios come out. It's asked if I want to do the installation and use the storage. I say yes, and here we go. Let's exit out, and now we'll check and see if Chirp's installed. It's under Other in the menu. So the first thing I get is a message saying that error reporting is enabled. I'm fine with that, so I click OK. And then here's a Chirp window. Just going to take a quick look and make sure all the menus look about right. And they do. Let's take a quick look and see what version of Chirp we're running. If you take a look here, it's the daily build from 2017, specifically January 24th. So that's pretty old. But we're going to be programming an older radio, so we should be okay. The first thing we want to do is make sure that our programming cable is firmly plugged into our radio. In this case, we're using a Baofeng UV5RE. It's a little bit of an older radio, so it would be okay. Make sure your USB is plugged into the side of your Raspberry Pi. And here's the maximized window. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to download the configuration, which is the factory default configuration. I want to set my port to USB, pick Baofeng as the vendor, and then I'm going to select UV5R. I'm going to hit OK. And then I get an error message saying that this is experimental and it could cause damage to your radio. I live dangerously, so I click yes. Now I get a little bit of instructions here. Make sure my radio is off, make sure everything's connected, and then make sure my volume's turned up. And my radio is now turned on. When I'm pulling the configuration from my radio, I get a blinking red light. 
Once cloning's done, I'll be able to take a look at what is installed as part of the factory configuration of the radio, and I'll be able to take a look at some settings. Okay, let's take a look at some of the settings that you can change. For example, I can manipulate my squelch. I can take a look at timeout settings. I can turn on beeping. I can change the display mode of my VFO from fre frequency to name or channel. I can do that on either VFO. I can change the lights and I can enable a roger beep, which I personally like, but a lot of people don't. Under advanced settings, I can set Vox, I can set dual watch, I can change the voice from Chinese to English. I can also enable or disable FM radio. I'm not going to go through every single setting, just some of the more popular ones. Take a look at other settings. I can change my power on messages to put things like my call sign or name. I can either enable or disable VHF TX or UHF TX. Some people do this because they don't want their radios to broadcast on things like FRS or GMRS. Here are the work mode settings. I usually don't fool around with those too much. FM preset, you may want to put your favorite channel in there. And then DTMF settings I don't fool with, and I usually don't fool with service settings. I haven't had a need to. Let's go over to the Memories tab. Now this is the only channel or memory that was programmed as part of the factory configuration. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that because I don't need it. Now with Chirp you have the option to install things from default stock configurations, which is pretty handy. So in this case we're going to go down and let's just say we're going to pick... FRS and GMRS channels. Now I get that pro I get that transmission on these channels is prohibited in the United States. So here are the channels programmed into the Baofeng radio. And you can see what channels each one of the frequencies is taken. You can also see a number of configuration items for each frequency along the top of the chart. You can also go in and you can manipulate your duplex setting and turn it off and that will prohibit transmission on this particular frequency. By scrolling over, you can see some other settings. If you notice, there's skip. You want to put an S in this field if you want to skip that channel or frequency as you're doing scanning on your Baofeng radio. We've used up 22 memory slots, so if I'm going to add any more uh, channels or frequencies, I want to make sure that I skip down to around 25 to make sure I don't overwrite anything. There are a number of other data sources you can query. I prefer to use repeater book, and you'll see why. Using repeater book, I can pick a location by state. So let's go ahead and pick New York, and then I can narrow that down by county. Let's just go ahead and pick Bronx County, and then I can actually pull down different bands or frequencies. I'm going to go with two meters. Now this only pulls back two repeaters, which I was surprised about. So what I want to do here, you can see it's going to write these in channels 1 and 2. So I'm going to add 10 twice, and then I'm going to click the Add 1 button until I get to 25. That way, when we go ahead and we add these to our configuration, it doesn't overwrite any of the FRS or GMRS frequencies. There you go. You can also click on a row and you can type in any repeater information that you may have for repeaters that are local to your area. The next thing that we want to do is we want to write this information back to our Baofeng radio so that we can use our radio to talk on the repeaters. So what we do is we click the radio menu, go down to upload to radio. When this happens we want to make sure our configuration information is correct and then we're going to get instructions. Following these instructions, I click OK, and then I get a warning saying this is an experimental driver and terrible things could happen to my radio. But we're going to go ahead and click Yes anyway. And then now it's cloning the radio once again, writing the configuration. Your radio should be blinking green when this is happening. Once this is done, we're done. What I might want to do is go over and I save this configuration file that we made. That way I can install it on a different radio, or I can install it back to this radio if I make any changes through the keypad interface. There we are. It's pretty simple and we're done. I want to thank everybody for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments below, that would be great. If you have any ideas or uh, suggestions, I would appreciate them very much. Thanks for watching, everybody.